There's just something about bass. I've just loved bass ever since the first time I heard it. It's just nothing like the rush that you get from your whole body just shaking. I just, I just can't describe it. So it all started, I was driving in my car, playing my bass like usual, and I could start to smell something heating up. Me, Dylan, and Dylan's brother, Zach, we were out driving, listening to bass. I was sitting in the back seat, and we noticed a smell. It didn't smell that great. I was like thinking, is it the voice coils? I don't know, so I went and Popped the trunk, felt the subs, uh, not even slightly warm at all. So I was just like, well, what, the, what the hell is it then? I could smell it was coming from the amp. I was like, fucking shit. So I realized the zero gauge positive going into the amp was, was uh, pinched. And I figured that was probably what was, you know, causing the problem. So. A few days later, Dylan was like, oh, I'm just gonna fix it myself. I just need to change a wire. And so I'm like, okay, cool, easy fix. I changed out the wire to a brand new one. I also unplugged the ground, plugged the ground back in. That's it. And I turned the car on and the subs are going doom, 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 boom. Super, super loud. Super insane, so I turned the car off and I try to mess with it some more and it just keeps happening. So then I try to take the uh, ground wire back out because I figured that was probably what was causing the problem. Well, then the nut for the amp gets stuck. And I've had problems with this nut like before. I've had problems with this amp before. That nut got stripped in the past. I had a friend actually like tap it out and put a new hole in which is super cool uh, but now it's stuck again so I'm trying to get it open and it strips again because it was so stuck in there it was insane and I get a text from him and he's like freaking out I'm like oh god I had no idea what to do I took it to a shop they ended up telling me to ship it to Rockford to get it fixed and you know, honestly, they're right. That amp is just busted. The shop told Dylan that he should send the amp back to the manufacturer and Dylan was like, nah, I'm gonna do something different. I bought a SCAR 4500. Dylan found a sweet deal on an amp that wasn't like the top quality amp that he had. It was um, a Korean manufacturer, which is cool because the car is Korean, so hey, it's gonna be like the perfect match, right? I know quite different than the Rockford Fosgate T2500 BDCP, but I bought the Rockford originally because I was just like trying to have the top end level shit and now it didn't work out for me, and it's insanely expensive. A brand new one is like 1300 I bought mine used, and it didn't come in the best shape. So I'm not buying something used again, and I am not spending $1,300 for 3,000 watts. So I went with SCAR. Honestly, I'm excited, but I'm also kind of now, after I bought it, I saw the JP series. I don't know, I kind of wish I would have went with that, his Korean amp line, but oh well. Uh, what I have is gonna be nice, and honestly, I didn't really want to go too crazy because if I have the bass go up too high, then I have to do my mids and highs all over to make it match. Car audio is expensive. I don't know how to do door panels, and I've been told it, was, it could be like $1,000 just for the door panels. Whew, yeah, I, I, I can't afford all that.
basically, this is a huge project I didn't want to get into because I have so much other stuff to do in life other than focus on car audio. I focused on that enough like five years ago when I built my current system. It's very time consuming. There's more to life than car audio, but at the same time, it is fun, even if it's a distraction on what's important. And I can't afford to pay someone to do it. That would save the time, but that's too expensive, and I don't trust them either. So I gotta do it myself, take a ton of time, and build this project. I bought a ton of new tools. I wanna do this the right way. I used to go to a shop and have them crimp all my zero gauge lugs for me because I was too lazy to buy a crimper myself, I guess, but I had to get a heat gun. I got the crimper, I got the wire cutters. I'm sick of sawing through freaking zero gauge with a razor blade. Oh my God, it's so annoying. So got a bunch of new wire. I bought a drill set. This whole thing is setting me back, especially when I just got laid off from one of my jobs. Yeah, so all this happened at a very unfortunate time. He was just laid off from a job, um, and then he also found that his hours were cut at another job, and he decided to buy this new amp. It was like $800, and I was just like, yeah. Um, do you really think you should be spending money on that right now? <laughs> like, rent's coming up, you don't know when you're gonna find another videography job. Um, but he did it anyways. Um, each to their own, on how they spend their money. I can't go with no bass. I am addicted, so... Yeah, I guess we'll see how it goes. So first I took all my tools, grabbed my amp, and I put it all in my car and I drove to a random parking lot because I am not going to work on my car in my own apartment parking lot. I do not want my neighbors to know what I got in my trunk. I don't trust people. I had my system jacked before. Not cool. Do not want that to happen again. So I got to the parking lot and I started unscrewing the old amp from the box. And he started taking it out and there was so much messy nastiness underneath there so I had to clean that, grab the new amp, put it in the spot, realize I had to move my mids and highs amps because they were not going to give the big new scar amp any room to breathe so I had to move them. clean up the nasty mess underneath the hose as well. Then I started screwing the amp down to the box. It was going smooth till I realized I forgot something, had to go all the way back to my house and then back to the random parking lot. I think I went to a Randy, yeah, I went to a car wash. I mounted the amp to the box using some furniture little like cushions to give yourself cushion between the, the legs of like your couch and your floor to not scratch your floor. Figured that could help stop vibrations on the amp. Everyone says don't mount your amp to your box so because the vibrations so I just let's hope this works. And then I was gonna put the new battery terminals that I got onto my battery in my trunk. And I unscrewed the bolt to go to my battery. And that's when I realized that my current lugs on all my zero gauge do not fit on the new terminal. So annoying. Oh my God, I, I literally just gave up right then and there on the night because I had a plan. So the next day I go to Home Depot, I buy a drill set, or a bunch of drill bits, to try to drill through the lugs that I currently had. <laughs> I go out there, I put the drill bits in my drill, I start trying to drill into those 
logs I got and it did not work. I actually cut my finger doing it. I kind of didn't think it was going to work, but I kind of thought it might. I had to try. I really didn't want to recrimp all those zero gauge lugs. It's just did not want to do it, but that's what I ended up having to do. I had to crimp a lot of lugs. I grabbed my heat gun and I grabbed my little portable battery that I bought that's like a portable outlet and I'm, re I'm getting ready. I turn the heat gun on and nothing. I'm like, what the hell? I knew my little portable battery was charged, but I don't know. I had to drive all the way home. <laughs> Turns out the battery was charged. It just doesn't charge a heat gun. I tried it on some Christmas lights, worked fine. So then I had to grab a lighter, go back to my spot, and I start crimping them more using a lighter to do the heat shrink. Did not want to do it that way, but that was my only choice. And it did work, kind of burnt some of them a little bit, but whatever, it worked. My wires going into my subs is like super old wire and it got pinched behind the back seats and yeah so one thing that i'm happy about with this new amp is that the wire inputs are on the side it makes so much more sense that way i hate the way rockford did it like they put it on the long skinny side instead of the short side so dumb in my opinion so in my car I could have moved the amp probably and then would have been maybe fine, but still the wires went between my back seat and the box and they all, that's how it all probably got messed up in the first place. So my sub wires got pinched just like that as well. So I had to take the subs out, which is an insanely difficult task in my car. Now I know a lot of sound systems, it ain't easy for a lot of people, especially when they got like heavy 18 inch subs and they're trying to reach into some gigantic fourth order box or something, but still it ain't easy doing what I do. Cause I mean, my box is like hundred pounds and I think the subs are 50 pounds each. So it's like 200 pounds. And all by myself, I lifted that up. took the subs out, put new wire in. Uh, I just did 12 gauge again. I kind of wish now that I would have went bigger because I didn't know I was going to have to drill through my old holes in the box for the speaker wire for the new wire to go in. Did not know that. Just thought I'd make it easy and go with 12 gauge again since the holes were already there, but nope. I had to re-drill, so I should have probably just went with like 8 gauge to be safe in case of a possible upgrade in the future, but I didn't. Definitely hurt my back in the process. I mean, God, car audio takes a toll, man. Just bending over the whole time. My setup is really compact. I mean, I use the space efficiently, which is awesome, but I mean, I don't have much room and to make 212s fit, you got to use up all the space, man. But I did it and but I'm just bending over the whole time, hurting my back. I had stuff in this random parking lot just laid out everywhere. It's just hilarious. If someone would have drove by, they'd be like, what the hell? I mean, I like turned the parking lot into my garage. It's crazy. I'd clean it up and then go back to work and to my job and then go back the next day. Definitely need a garage someday. Like I need a house with a garage so I don't have to deal with this ever again. I don't know how you people in apartments do it. People without a garage. I don't know if everyone who does car audio just owns a house. I don't know. That would be convenient though, for sure. So then I went back the next day 
It's like noon. I'm tired. I worked late. I ain't really feeling it today, but let's get it going. Should finish it probably today. At least get the base going. Start working on doing more lugs for my zero gauge wire because I got a lot. Then I started mounting my new fuse box. In the past, I just used a couple individual fuse holders and was so glad to finally make it look nice with one solid fuse box. So many times during the whole thing, I had to move my car because it was the shade was moving and I did not want to get burnt out there, so I'd have to move my new shaded spot. because I had to redo so many lugs because it wouldn't fit on my battery terminals. I've used all my lugs up and now I can't even finish. So I had to just do another Amazon purchase for more lugs. It's gonna be two days now until I can even hook this up, man. So annoying. Should've bought extra, I guess. Trying to be cheap, shit's expensive. Oh man, I had to keep reordering so many things. And just waiting, playing the waiting game. And once I get going on something, I don't want to stop, man. I just want to keep going, but I couldn't. I had to sit and wait for days and do nothing. All of these setbacks, I did not expect. You know, like the battery terminals not fitting properly with my old lugs, having to redo so many lugs, running out of lugs. Oh man, it was just taking so much more time than I expected. It did seem like it was taking a while. I was gone on vacation for like five days and it was like all he was doing when he was gone. Just finally got my package. I've been waiting so long for. I've been waiting all day. They just gotta like deliver it so late, 7, 18 p.m. And then the sun's gonna go down soon. I just wanna install this thing. So bad. Uh, I might have to just do it in the dark now. Instant I got my package in the mail from Amazon and my new lugs, I was like, Whoop, I'm going now. It was nighttime, but I set up my lights in a random parking lot again so that I could get going on this build, finish this up, and didn't really have too much left to do. I had to just do six more lugs. I plugged all the wires in except the sub speaker wire. All right, I got the power and the ground and the remote and the RCA is hooked up. I am going to start the car. I am nervous. Oh. Oh. oh, oh. Turned on the zero dB test tone with my voltmeter. For some reason, I couldn't figure out how to set, I couldn't get a reading out of the digital multimeter. It was insane, no voltage reading. So I just went off the base knob clipping indicator and set the gains that way. After I set the gain, I plugged the speaker wires into the amp. I'm about to turn it off for the first time. 
and got in my car and turned it on. So awesome to have bass again. I went like two weeks without bass, man. Like, not cool at all. I drove like crazy that night, just driving all over the city, just blasting bass, picking new songs, grinning huge, just loving it. Just love bass so much. Dude, it's tickling my fucking, my whole neck and throat, dude. Like, it's so loud. <laughs> it's crazy. I, uh, wow, yeah, I don't know. I think it might be louder than my older one for sure, but it's hard to really remember. Um, you know, and it's like, how did I have the settings on the older one versus the settings on this one? But this bass knob is not showing any clipping, and I haven't seen it turn on yet to show any clipping, so, like, and I keep putting it a little bit louder and a little bit louder. Like, it's fucking loud. Like, holy shit, like, <laughs> my neck is getting, like, it's gotta be louder than what I had before. Like, it's weird to say, cause like, I can't really compare it for sure. I do want to get it on a decibel meter and compare it for sure, but I believe the Scar 4500 is louder than the Rockford Fosgate 2500. I mean, it sounds like, of course, but the Scar amp's cheaper, you know? And I was a little worried it would have worse sound quality than the Rockford because Rockford's like top of the line, but no, like it sounds great. <laughs> So when I first heard the new amp, I was like, yep, there's that feeling again, there's that bass. <laughs> um, I was definitely impressed, it was definitely loud. I mean, it's hard to compare it to his previous system, but it kind of sounded like it was slightly better. Maybe it was just because I hadn't heard bass in a while. I kind of really think I took it to a new level with this bass and it's just insane. I just never like thought I would have a 4,500 watt amp in my car. Sometimes I'm driving and it's so loud. I just never thought I would have something like this. And it's kind of hilarious how this all happened. Like I literally had like a horrible setback occur. Just my amp just fell apart. Huge bummer. And now I have something better. I mean, I am uh, set back a lot money wise, <laughs> but oh, I love it. I'm kind of glad this all happened, honestly, because it was really fun. And I cleaned the wires up in my trunk so much better than before. Like if you look at the before after, I can't believe how bad my battery looked before all the connections I did not have any good terminals on there. I had all my lugs going on one post on each terminal. Oh, it was garbage. So I actually have it looking good for once. I don't know why I had it looking so crappy for like five years ever since I installed it. So weird, so weird. I have a fuse box for the first time. It's so cool. I mean, it just looks so good. So my system is looking better than ever. It's sounding better than ever. Gotta say, super happy with everything. And I would say it was a success.